In the last video, we saw uh, a great theorem for helping us find a better unbiased estimator uh, than some crude starting point. So suppose we have some t of x that is estimating, so t of x that's estimating tau of theta, then um, if t of x is something very crude, we saw in a previous example that maybe t of x is just one of the IID members of the sample. Well, we can get a better estimator, meaning lower variance, if we take the expectation of the original estimator conditioned on a sufficient statistic s of x. We end up getting something that's still unbiased and has lower variance. So it turns out that if we add a condition to s of x, meaning that it's not only sufficient, but it's also complete, which we're about to define, then the resulting estimator that you get from the Rao-Blackwell theorem, say t star, is the best estimator. Best meaning the uniformly minimum variance unbiased estimator. So really we just need to define and work with completeness a bit in order to come up with this, uh, this best estimator. So in order to do that, let's suppose we have a random sample, as we typically do, um, from a distribution with PDF f of x theta. Um, we say that a statistic s of x is complete for the distribution if for any function of g we have the expectation of g of s of x equal to zero for all values of the parameter theta, then this implies that g of s must be equal to zero with probability one. So this definition is a bit complicated. It seems to have a conditional wrapped in another conditional. So we're saying that a statistic is complete for a distribution if, and then we get an implication. So it's complete for a distribution if we have any function g of the sufficient statistic in expectation equal to zero means that the function g itself is equal to zero. So we'll have some practice in just a moment uh, working with this definition. But there are two main uh, reasons why we will use this definition and why it's important to us. The first is that it really ensures that um, the probability distributions associated with different values of theta are unique. And the second reason is that it suggests to us that there's really only one function of a complete statistic that is unbiased for tau of theta. And that's something that we will uh, show right now. So if we suppose we have a complete statistic s of x, then there's really only one function of s of x that is unbiased for whatever the target is, say tau of theta. So what we'll show here is that uh, if s is a complete statistic, then g1 must be equal to g2, which means there's a unique function of a complete statistic that is unbiased for tau of theta. And that's ultimately uh, what we'll use when we find the uniform minimum variance unbiased estimator. So if g1 and g2 are both unbiased estimators, then that means that the expectation of g1 of s of x minus the expectation of g2 of s of x is equal to zero. And that's because, well, they're each unbiased. So this expectation is equal to tau of theta, and this expectation is equal to tau of theta. So we have tau of theta minus tau of theta is equal to zero. And of course, using properties of expectation, this implies that 
the expectation of g1 of s of x minus g2 of s of x is equal to 0. And if we take this function here together, so g1 of s of x minus g2 of s of x, and we just call that g of s of x, then we're saying the expectation of g of s of x is equal to 0. Well, that's a condition for completeness, right? So if s of x is complete, then that would imply that g of s is equal to 0. So assuming completeness, then g1 of s of x minus g2 of s of x is equal to 0. Right, because we've defined our g in this case to be this whole quantity. So this whole quantity is equal to 0. And what that means is that g1 of s of x is equal to g2 of s of x, right? Just move this term over. So what we've done is we've shown that if we have two unbiased estimators, these two functions, unbiased estimators and their functions of a complete statistic, then it must be that those two estimators are the same, so that there's really only one unbiased estimator uh, that's a function of the complete statistic. So that's an important consequence of completeness. Now let's look at an example. Let's consider a random sample from the Poisson distribution with rate parameter lambda. And let's let s of x be equal to the sum of the xi's. So we've shown that this is a sufficient statistic. So we know that. Uh, what, we're, we're, what we're about to do here is to show that it's also complete. So let's consider g of our statistic to be such that the expectation of g of s of x is equal to 0. So what we're doing here is we are assuming the uh, antecedent, right? We're assuming this part of the definition, and we're trying to show that ultimately g of s is equal to uh, 0 with probability 1. So we're assuming the antecedent. Let's try to prove the consequent, which is, well, we know by definition of the expectation. So let's just do 0, which is this right-hand side, is equal to, let's expand out this using the law of the unconscious statistician. Well, that says that we'll have a sum from y equals 0 up to infinity of g of, let's use y to denote s of x here, just for, uh, you know, for shorthand. So we would have g of y is equal to e to the negative n lambda times n times lambda raised to the y over y factorial. And the reason for that is because the distribution of s of x, which is the sum of the xi's, well, it has a Poisson distribution, uh, a Poisson distribution with rate parameter n times lambda, since each of the xi's has a Poisson lambda distribution.
So this is the expectation of G uh, of the sum of the Xi's. And we can notice that we can take E to the minus N lambda, right, this term outside of the sum because it does not depend on Y. And then we have, if we expand out the sum, it might be a little easier to see. We'll start out with a G of zero. So if we plug in uh, zero here, G of zero, whatever this function is, we just know that it's some function where the expectation is zero. Now when we plug in y equals zero here, we should get one, and we get one down here. So we get one next to g of zero. And then when y is equal to one, we get g of one times, well when y is equal to one, we get n times lambda over one. When uh, y is equal to 2, we get g of 2 times n times lambda squared over 2. And that pattern will continue. And what we're noticing here is that, well, for the Poisson distribution, we assume that lambda is not zero, right? It's a positive real number. So this term will never be zero. N again is a sample size, and we typically assume it's greater than one, but in this case, even if it's one, this term is not zero. And under those same conditions, if we keep raising this term to higher and higher powers, and we divide by um, factorials, right? This term will never be zero either, even as we go higher and higher. So the only way and we should also notice this term out here that we factored out is also uh, not zero, right? It won't never be zero. So the only way to make this entire term zero is if each of these g's are zero for all values of y, right? y equals zero, y equals one, y equals two, etc. And that's because if this whole thing is zero, this term must be zero. And in order for that term to be zero, each one of these must be zero because what we're multiplying each of these g's by is not zero. So all of that tells us that g of y must be zero for all y equals zero, one, two, etc. And so we've just gone through the definition of completeness, right? We started out with the expectation of this function of the statistic being equal to zero. We use that fact to show that it must be the case that g of y is equal to zero. So this implies that s of x is complete. And that's, of course, always with respect to our xi being Poisson lambda. So it's with respect to a distribution. Now think about what that tells us based on the derivation that we did on the previous slide. It tells us that there is, since s of x, the sum of the xi, since this function of the sample is complete, then we know that there's only one function of s of x that's unbiased for estimating lambda. And of course, we know what that function is. We take in the sum of the xi's and we divide by n, and we get an unbiased estimator for lambda. That's the only function of this sum of the xi's that is unbiased for lambda.